How is she? Is she better? She's fine. She's conscious. Can I see her now? Not now. She won't see you. You mean she doesn't want to? Zuleika said she can't see you just yet. Because she wants to be with her god for a few days. She wants to be alone. Do you understand what she means? Because I don't understand. Before she was so eager to see you, now she won't. I understand how she is feeling. Allow her to be alone. She wants to be left alone to pray. What's the matter? Will the prophet of God tell me? <laughs> Good for Zuleika. This blessing is very rare. Zuleika has spent years searching everywhere for Joseph's house. Tired and disappointed, she knocked, hoping to see Joseph. But the one who opened the door was far more beautiful than Joseph and received her with affection. I cannot compete. Joseph can never match the beauty of the Creator. I am not entitled to envy the blessing bestowed upon Zuleika. Envy is beneath Asenath's dignity. One must be happy for Zuleika. One must aspire to have her mood. She is in the company of another beloved, and I think she will be there for 40 days. 40 days? Yes, she will not leave sooner than that. So she waited for you for many years, and now it is your turn to wait for her for a while. Why are you crying? The others arrived safely, so there's nothing to worry about. Why haven't they returned yet, then? <laughs> they will. You should not have left. You should have waited until Jacob's children returned. If we hadn't returned to Canaan when we did, we would have starved to death. Besides, we didn't know how long to wait for them. What if we had waited and they never returned?
for us. By the hut. Yeah. I can see father is there. Is that dust? Look, it is dust. It is. It is them and their animals are raising dust. They're back. They're back. Grandfather, they're coming. The caravan is back. The caravan is back. See? Although he's happy they've returned, he doesn't want to look at them. That's expected. He hasn't forgiven them yet. Benjamin, they're here. <laughs> I'm going to go and stay with Father. In our fault, Mother. We wanted to return immediately after getting the wheat. But the governor of Egypt didn't allow it. That's right. In fact, he insisted we stay as guests at his palace. Yes, he seemed to fancy on receiving Canaanite brothers. And had we not insisted on returning to our families, he might have kept us there. Where is Father? Since the day you left, he's been watching the road worriedly. When the other Canaanites returned without you, he became very anxious. He was here until just now, and when he was sure that you were safe, he returned to the hut. We saw him leave. Does he still not want to see us? He is justified. He cannot forget the pain of Joseph's separation. If he doesn't want to see us, we cannot force him. You! Unload the weed over there! 
You children, let's go. Come on. Come on. The people of Canaan are happy your sons are back and have returned with so much wheat. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Everyone can return to Canaan. Everyone, let's go back. If he doesn't want it, all of you must go and see him. Ask how he's doing. I don't think. Come on. Father, can we come in? Greetings to the Prophet of God. Hello to the Prophet of God. Hello to the Prophet of God. Greetings to the Prophet of God. Hello to the Prophet of God. Hello to the Prophet of God. Hello, Father. Greetings to you, Father. Hello, Father. God's greetings to you. I'm happy you're back. And we are happy to see you again, Father. We hope the Prophet of God is well. Where were you? We were worried. The governor of Egypt kept us. In fact, he invited us and received us with respect. Here is the wheat the governor gave us. It is of high quality. What a lovely scent. It's so refreshing. It smells of life. And it has a familiar scent. You have brought back life for the Canaanite people. Did the governor of Egypt receive all Canaanite travelers and treat them with respect? Or was it just you? Because it, it seems that he didn't pay attention to the other Canaanites. No, it was just us. He kept us in his palace for three days and did everything for us. Did you not wonder why the governor of Egypt treated two groups of people from the same city so very differently? They said it was because we are monotheists. No, that cannot be the reason. The other Canaanites traveling with you are also monotheists. There is certainly another reason for it. You know, it was even his own Chamberlain who served us. Egypt is an ancient country, and the governor is a powerful man. Why would he invite shepherds from Canaan? His kindness and attention were either due to his prudence or acquaintance. Did he 
introduce himself? No. Now I think of it, he didn't. But Reuben and I both thought that we knew him from somewhere. Yes, we tried. But we didn't recognize him. In return for respecting you, did he ask for anything? A request? A question? An expectation? Nothing at all. He's so rich that he didn't ask for anything. Although the governor was kind and generous, he didn't give us much weed. If Benjamin and you were with us, we could have brought more weed. It doesn't matter. If you get the same amount of wheat when you next return, we will survive the famine. And we will see what God wills for the coming year. But there will be no next time, Father. Unless we take Benjamin with us. Are you saying you won't get wheat unless I let you take Benjamin? No, Father. That's not what Simeon meant. It was the governor. He said if you don't bring your younger brother next time, I won't give you wheat. How did he know that you have another brother? One who's younger than all of you? It came up in conversation. We told him that we have an old father and a younger brother who also need wheat. He suspected us, Father. He thought we were trying to take advantage of his kindness. Yes, he thought we were falsely claiming to have a brother and a father just so we could get more wheat. We swore and we implored, but he still didn't believe us. And he said to us, bring your younger brother next time if you are telling the truth. He said to us, do not come to Egypt without your brother or you will be punished. Impossible. I will never allow Benjamin to go with you. Do not even think about it. Calm down, father. doing in the wheat. There are so many. Go on with what you're doing. I'll be back. Where did you get these? It was in one of the wheat sacks. How? This is exactly what we paid for the wheat. Those are our coins. It's our pouch. You're right. It seems the governor has given us free wheat. What if it was a mistake? No. It looks intentional. Could it be a test? A test of our honesty? Perhaps the governor wants to know if we would keep the coins or return them. Did you somehow cheat in the deal and not pay for the wheat. You didn't teach us to cheat, Father. Be sure that is not the case. We know nothing about it. Then it is clear, I think, that the governor of Egypt wants to encourage you to return to Egypt. But why? Yes, why? 
Why would the governor of Egypt want them to return? We don't know. We don't. Why would or he? maybe it doesn't mean he wants you to return. Maybe it means instead that he wants you never to return. When one is accepted, his money is accepted. And when one is not accepted, his money is returned. The Almighty God takes the deeds of the servants he likes and records them for him. He also rejects the worshipping and praying of those he doesn't like. What if the governor rejected you from his court by returning the coins in the wheat? That cannot be. No, the governor was eager to meet us. Right. right. And had we not insisted upon returning, we would still be there. Right. right. And rejecting the coins means rejecting us. Why insist on returning with Benjamin? I have no doubt that the governor of Egypt has a plan. The reception, showing respect, returning the money, and of course, most importantly, insisting upon meeting Benjamin. All this indicates that the governor of Egypt has some plan. I hope his intentions are good. Don't you think returning coins shows the good intentions of the governor? But what about his insisting to meet Benjamin? You are justified in not trusting us with Benjamin. But there is no doubt of the good intentions of the governor of Egypt. No, I will never allow Benjamin to go with you to Egypt. Why won't you let Benjamin go with them? Because they have not yet repented nor shown any regret for what they did to Joseph. How do you know the one who has not repented will not repeat the same sin again? We will run out of wheat again. What will we do then? Still hasn't forgotten Joseph's memory yet. How could he trust Benjamin to us on any journey? He has to, or the governor of Egypt will not give us wheat. You mean father has to give his dear son to the wolves again? We are not wolves, Levi. We made a mistake once, and it's over now. We have no evil intentions towards Benjamin. How can you be sure of that? By not repenting? By our lack of regret, or by our telling the truth and apologizing. That poor man implored us to tell the truth and repent. But we did nothing. We did worse than nothing. We watched Father burning, like wild rue for 40 years over the pain of Joseph's separation. Any of us could have told him the truth and ended his sorrow. God's greetings to you. Aren't you tired? No, Excellency. Guarding the house of the Prophet of God is everybody's dream. Thank you. God bless you.
Greetings to the prophet of God. You are waiting. Greetings to my kind wife, Asanath. How is Lady Zaleka doing? She continues to pray. She speaks little, sleeps little, and she is not eating much at all. Greetings to the prophet of God. God's greetings to you. Is that for Lady Zaleka? Yes, Excellency. I take it so she may eat a little. Wait a minute. Excellency use our sieve's arrival? No, I didn't notice him at all. But you used to smell his scent from a distance in the past. He was beside you for a few moments before you noticed him. In the past, Joseph was my beloved. Now I found a better beloved to worship. Why didn't you talk to each other? We did. But you didn't hear it. What happened just then? I don't understand. Nothing. But she needs to be alone. We must let her be. Her maids must leave the room. Their presence is distracting Zaleka. It appeared that you did not talk, but seemingly you shared secrets with each other. We just couldn't hear them. secrets, and you hear well. Do not underestimate yourself. The prophet of God is my teacher. Whatever I know, I've learned from you. have left. It's only enough for a few days. 
If we don't have wheat, we must eat the sheep. Their milk is what's keeping us alive. My grandfather, Abraham, wanted to sacrifice my uncle, Ishmael. God had ordered the sacrifice. However, when God noticed that Abraham was fully prepared to sacrifice his son, he accepts his sacrifice and sent a sheep to be sacrificed instead of Ishmael. Since then, they have always called my uncle the sacrifice of God. As Abraham was ready to sacrifice Ishmael, God returned Ishmael to Abraham. My children, seemingly your grandmother wishes to talk to me. You can all go now. Go and play. Children. Hello, Grandma. Hello, Grandma. Hello, Grandmother. Hello, my dear child. Hello, Grandmother. What is it? Why do you look so sad? We'll soon witness the death of our dear ones. The ones that are playing happily at this moment. They will wriggle and die like beheaded chickens. We cannot allow it. And what? Is it my fault? There isn't any wheat left. If we don't find more wheat, we must brace ourselves for calamity. Greetings, Father. Hello, Father. Hello to the prophet of God. Hello, Mother. Hello, Mother. Hello, mother. Hello father. Hello, father. Hello, father. Hello, mother. Hello, mother. Hello, mother. Hello, mother. Why aren't you doing anything? Are you waiting for the famine to kill all your children, and then you'll do something? Wheat is found only in Egypt, but they won't give us any. The governor of Egypt would not give us wheat without Benjamin. So you're saying I must choose between Benjamin and my grandchildren? Benjamin will be safe, Father. Believe me. You said the same thing about Joseph. We assure you, we will protect Benjamin. The way you protected Joseph? If Benjamin doesn't come with us, then they won't give us any wheat, and all of us will starve to death. And what excuse would you give to take Benjamin if there wasn't a famine? No, I don't trust any of you, and I won't allow you to take him, unless... Any condition we will accept. What is it, Father? Unless you give me divine collateral, you must swear before Almighty God that you will return him to me. We promise, Father. Of course, we promise, Father. Yes, we, promise. Yes, we, swear. Yes, we promise. Of course, we promise, we promise Father. Father. Do you remember what my curse did to Ishtar Temple and its priests? No, that isn't enough. You must sit, sit down and reach your hands to the sky and swear before Almighty God. Sit. Sit. Come on. Sit. We swear before the God Almighty to protect Benjamin and return him safely to Father. We swear that we will protect Benjamin, even if it costs us our own lives. We swear this before you and before your prophet. 
We swear this before you and before your prophet. We swear to honor this promise with our lives. We swear to honor this promise with our lives. Lest we be deprived of God's blessing. Lest we be deprived of God's blessing. We will accept God's punishment. We will accept God's punishment. If we do not keep our promise. If we do not keep our promise. This time I entrust my son to God, not to you. He will return Benjamin. Once I entrusted Joseph to Levi, and what happened? Only you know that. I hope Benjamin is safe this time, or you will not see your father alive again. You are right, father. How can one trust the person who breaks his promise? You are right. Go. Prepare for the journey. Go. Are they safe? Yes, Mother. Don't worry. If you lose them, the governor will think that you are thieves. The coins are in a safe place. Don't worry. Don't worry. We weren't dressed properly last time. Well, we didn't know we would be invited by the governor of Egypt. How do you know he will invite you this time? We won't know until we get to Egypt. The governor will be happy to see us this time. As if they're wearing beautiful, elegant clothes. The governor knows there is a famine. He knows we spend our money on food and not clothes. <laughs> God be with you. Take care. Goodbye. Let's go! God keep you all safe. I don't know why I'm worried about you. Are you worried about Benjamin? No. This time I'm worried about all of you. I feel the governor of Egypt has some kind of plan. You mean you think he is planning something bad, Father? If that's the case, why do you allow our children on this journey? I don't know what his intention is. You must be cautious. Cautious how, Father? He is the governor of Egypt. He can do whatever he wants. And we can't do anything. Perhaps you could try to avoid meeting him. That is not possible, Father. They know us ten brothers now. Especially the guards at the gate. You told me Thebes has many gates. Enter through a different gate. If he has bad intentions, he will surely have given the guards descriptions of us. But what if you were to enter the gates separately? 
He will surely have told them to inform him when they see the ten Canaanite brothers. But father, I don't think they will recognize us if we aren't together. That's why you don't go together. Enter through different gates in pairs. Get the wheat and then return quietly. This way, you will avoid any possible ill intention. Nothing to it. We'll do just that. What if they do recognize us? In that case, take refuge in God and submit to his will. I hope you all return safely. Take care. And look after Benjamin. We couldn't bear any more suffering. Be careful, my children. Don't worry, Mother. What happened to Joseph will never happen again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Farewell, Father. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Don't worry, Father. By God's will, nothing bad will happen. Take care, son. I couldn't bear losing you as well as Joseph. You've entrusted me to God. So there's no need to worry. Be careful, my son. Yes, auntie, of course. Benjamin, call me mother. You are dearer to me than my children. Certainly, mother. Besides, I've always considered you my mother. Since I was born, you have looked after me. Be sure I love you more than Judah and Levi. Goodbye. Goodbye. God be with you. I hope you return soon, my sons. Thank you, Excellency Governor. Do you remember the ten Canaanite brothers? Yes, Excellency. The brothers whom you invited. As soon as they return, bring them to me. Tell them the Governor of Egypt wants to see them. Yes, Excellency. Excellency Malik has already given me that order. The Governor's order has already been given. Be sure that we will bring them to you. All right. Is it not strange the attention the governor pays towards those brothers from Canaan? Yes, and stranger that he invited them to his palace. He doesn't pay attention to the nationals of other countries. It must be something important. Joseph, did you send Benjamin with my brothers? I had no choice. His brothers couldn't go back to Egypt without him. You mean you're not worried about Benjamin? Yes, I am. But famine threatens the Canaanite people. I cannot ignore that. Besides, I had before entrusted Joseph to his brothers, to Levi. But this time I entrusted my Benjamin to God.
aside, apple of father's eye. A horse may kick you and then father will blame us. <laughs> Out of the way! Stand aside! By the way, what did you and your brother do for Father to love you so much? <laughs> Forget Father. Ask the governor of Egypt why he loves me so much. <laughs> <laughs>